Welcome in, and thanks for joining us for the WHHI Daily News, where we strive to bring you more Low Country news more often. Happy Heritage Week. I'm Bob Stevens. The results of a private autopsy of Stephen Smith could be released by lawyers for Sandy Smith to the State Law Enforcement Division within the next week or so, according to reporting in the Hampton County Guardian and the Greenville News. The two papers say they have learned the autopsy was done in Tampa over the weekend by a company that does this sort of thing privately, and that the new evidence was found concerning how Smith died. They haven't elaborated on that. The case has been reopened by SLED, who reportedly spent about $100,000 to escort Smith's body to Florida last weekend. Huge economic news for the low country. Gulfstream Aviation has announced plans to build a new airplane manufacturing facility in Savannah that will create 1,600 new jobs. It's a $150 million capital investment to our region. Gulfstream currently employs over 11,000 people in our area, many of whom, of course, live in Beaufort and Jasper counties. Those of you with kids in Beaufort County schools can get a jump on planning for the holidays and graduation for the next school year already. The school board has approved the calendar that will start the school year on Monday, August 21st, with the last half day on Wednesday, June 5th of 2024. The winter break will be a little more than two full weeks, starting Friday, December 22nd, running until Monday, January 8th. Graduations for the class of 24 will be staggered over the week of June 3rd through June 7th. The school board also has come up with a partial solution for parents who don't want their kids exposed to certain books in their schools, an opt-out form that won't let them check out books from the school library. There currently is a form that a parent can fill out to keep students from checking out specific books, but a library-wide opt-out option and a parental approval only option will now be available soon. The book review committees have made it through about half of the nearly 100 titles they've been looking at. They have banned three books district wide and limited access to a handful of others. And remember those bald eagles whose nesting we could watch last spring on the Hilton Head Island Land Trust's Raptor Cam? Well, the eagles did not come back this spring, but a pair of ospreys are preparing the nest for a clutch of babies, and the Land Trust is inviting you to name that pair of ospreys and watch them on camera on their website, hhilandtrust.org. The winning names will be announced next week. Curiously, some great horned owls have also visited that nest when the ospreys are gone. For more information on these and other low country stories, we invite you to visit the sources listed on your screen. A lot of activity in sports heading into spring break. Justin Jarrett has the latest. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. It's the last week of the regular season for high school lacrosse in South Carolina, and the Hilton Head Seahawk girls were trying to tune up for the postseason with a trip across the bridge to take on the Bluffton Bobcats last night. It was all Seahawks as Hilton Head blanked the Bobcats 8 to nothing to improve to 10 and 3 on the season. One last test for the Seahawks at home tonight against a strong Oceanside Collegiate team. It was tune-up time on the Diamonds too with a couple of area teams taking on out of region opponents. Landon Hollywood Hargis gave the May River Sharks a strong start with four innings of one run ball and Jordan Reed and Joseph Schroeder each had a pair of knocks and an 8-2 win. And Dom Camacho was three for three with a triple, a homer and six RBIs in a route for Buford. Patrick Henry's Charlie Sauls had another big night, striking out seven in a complete game and adding a pair of doubles and three RBIs in an 11-2 win over Thomas Hayward. John Paul II's softball team improved to 7-1 with a 12-6 win over Hilton Head High, 13 strikeouts for Tevi Mullen, and Casey Graves was 3-4 with a double, a triple, and four RBIs. On the soccer pitch, Battery Creek's girls edged Patrick Henry, Buford Academy's boys blanked St. John's Christian, and Hilton Head Christian Academy's boys shut out Frederica. Hilton Head High's tennis team also picked up a big region win, taking down Lucy Beckham 5-1. Things will slow down a bit for spring break, but the best golfers in the world arrive next week for the RBC Heritage presented by Boeing. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. There will be nothing more important this coming week than the forecast weather-wise. <laughs> Maria Soden has the latest.
Thanks, Bob. Yep, so taking a look ahead, it does look like we're going to see some rain this weekend, but hopefully it should be clearing up in time for Easter. And then taking a look into next week for Heritage, we are going to start the week off with some great weather, but we might see some rain by the end of the week. Taking a look at Saturday, however, it's going to be cloudy and cooler with scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day, and the rain is supposed to continue on into the evening. You should be watching for any flash flood warnings in your area. Temperature-wise, Hill Nights give a high 67, low 55. Lofton's going to have a high 66, a low of 53, and Beaufort's going to have a high 64 and a low of 53. Come Sunday, it's going to be cloudy, breezy, and cool with a passing shower in the morning. Hillnet's going to have a high 61, a low of 50. Lofton's going to have a high 61, a low of 48, and Beaufort's going to have a high 62 and a low of 48. The sunrise for this weekend is going to be at 7.03 and sunset's going to be at 7.47. Taking a look at the beach tides, Saturday high tide is going to be 11.32 a.m. and low tide is going to be at 6.35 p.m. And then on Sunday, high tide is going to be at 12.15 p.m. and low tide is going to be at 7.12 p.m. Taking a look into next week, Monday it's going to be cloudy with highs in the upper 60s and 70s and lows in the 40s. Come Tuesday, it's going to be breezy in the morning, but otherwise sunny all throughout the day. Highs are going to be in the 70s, lows in the 50s. And then come Wednesday, it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy with highs in the 70s and lows in the 60s. That's it for today. Let's head it back to the desk. Still to come on the WHHI Daily News, we'll talk about one of the recipients of Heritage Classic Foundation funding this coming year. We'll also take a look at travel fashions, but up next, we'll talk with the tournament director of the RBC Heritage, Steve Wilmot, about last-minute preparations for the big week. 